Hello there lovely people, it's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're going to be looking at Castlevania Anniversary Collection, more specifically, every single game contained within it, albeit briefly. Big thanks to Konami for sponsoring this video, and seeing as we've got so many games to cover, I'm going to stop waffling right away, and as all that's left for me to say is, but enough waffling, let's dive right into things. <laughs> Okay, so let's start off by naming all the games we're going to be taking a look at. We've got the original Castlevania from the NES, 1987. We've got Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest, 1988 on the NES again, or NES if you prefer. Feel free to edit your own version of this video with me saying NES every time if you like. We've then got Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse from 1990 also on the NES. We've got Super Castlevania 4 from 1991 on the SNES. We've got the Castlevania Adventure from... We've got Castlevania The Adventure from 1989 on the Game Boy. We've got Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge from 1991 on the Game Boy. And then we've got Castlevania Bloodlines, also known as Castlevania The New Generation, from the Ma... I nearly said Mars System, from the Mega Drive and the Genesis uh, 1994, that one. And finally, first time this has ever been released in the West, Kid Dracula which went by, uh, oh, it's actually got it here, which went by the title Akuma, Akumajou Dracula Boko. There was a Japanese name, I can't pronounce it anyway, so uh, let's move on with our lives, but it's known as Kid Dracula, and this is the first time it's been released in the West. There was a Game Boy sort of like remake, but this is the original, the NES one. Uh -huh. So let's dive in with the original Castlevania and just see what this whole thing's about because that, that's a fun walk cycle. So unsurprisingly, this is the first Castlevania game, and uh, one that obviously set the trend and set a lot of things in motion. And if you've played Smash Bros, you'll no doubt recognize this character here. Yes, this is Simon Belmont, and uh, you play as him, unsurprisingly. Got a lot of go ghosty, ghouly things to kill him. Ah! Ah! <laughs> it's got good range on it, so... Oh, there we go, you can kill two at once. You've got to get the candlesticks, of course. Ooh, it's all about getting the candlesticks. Always get the candlesticks and these nasty ghouly things. I must admit, I have no idea how to do the moonwalk up the stairs, which I can only apologize for profusely. Oh no, I took some damage. It may be a little bit more basic compared to the other Castlevania games on this collection, but you know what? It was the first one. Of course it's gonna be a little bit basic. You can say the same about Super Mario Bros. But some things, some things just don't age. And hitting candles with a whip, that's one of them. Ah, it's the orb! It's the orb. Now, for memory, you can... Yes, you can do... <laughs> you can do the thing! I've always wanted to do that, but I didn't know it was a thing until Smash Bros. So I've done the thing now. Let's have a look at Castlevania 2. <laughs> Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. Now, this is really quite a different game compared to the first one, and was very, very bold and very ambitious for its time. Uh, it uh, tried to do much more than... Really, many games had sort of, ah, properly tried to do before and took a lot of inspiration from, uh, oh dear. <laughs> uh, it took a lot of inspiration from things like, uh, ah, or at least uh, it behaves in a very similar way to uh, things like uh, Zelda 2 being a sort of a side scrolling uh, RPG. And clearly, uh, <laughs> there's something going wrong. I'm not prepared for this. Maybe I should leave. This game even has a full day and night cycle, which is not... Oh, buy, buy a thorn whip. Uh, do I have enough? I don't have enough. I can't buy a thorn whip. But yeah, it's got a full day and night cycle, which is a really ambitious thing, considering when this game came out. I mean, obviously, we don't think twice about it these days, but yeah, full day and night cycle. That was a... That was a bold move. Are these guys gonna these guys are much easier to kill. This is where I should be going, not left. Hey! <laughs> what a horrible night to have cursed. I was really hoping that would happen. Classic line. And now it's nighttime, so that's the day and night cycle. Let's move on to Castlevania 3. Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. This took a much more similar approach to the original Castlevania games. And uh, you know, some people prefer that, some people preferred Simon's Quest. Who knows? I, I, I must admit, I didn't play this at the time because I wasn't very alive, I don't think. Maybe I was alive at this point, but I really would have been basically a fetus. This is the game that really cemented a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, 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 the sort of the tropes of Castlevania and uh, uh, avoid those. 
Can't use the whip on the stairs. How should I should have known that? And I mean, from a purely personal point of view, this is generally what I think of when I think of classic Castlevania, rather than you know, sort of rather than the original game, which is still really good fun. But even so, I think this just it just refined in everything. You know, did so much more that you just you can't do with the first game, and so. It's a right ruddy good time and I'm gonna have to stop myself from just playing this thing now because otherwise I'm not gonna be able to talk about the other games. Let's move on! Castlevania 4. Now, if you can't see a big bump in visual clarity, you need eyes. Oh, ho, ho, look at that sprite skate. Is that actually like proper sprite rotation? I think it is. That's, uh, now that's that seems so basic by modern standards, but for the SNES, that was... That was good, you know? That was like super FX level stuff. Much like Castlevania 3, this basically just took, you know, everything that was Castlevania and built upon it even further. And obviously on a new system, it allowed for a lot more variety in the things that could be done with, you know, bigger, more powerful hardware. And as a result is just, it, I mean, the, the bump in visual quality alone is colossal. It's um, it's very similar. Oh dear! It's very similar in that regard, um, at least in terms of the the visual style and stuff like that, to um, something like Super Metroid, where it was that sort of huge thing. And even you know, sprite rotation again, that was a big thing in uh, Super Metroid. And I'm gonna die if I continue like this. Oh, it's the crucifix! It's just like the Smash Bros. Look at that! It's maybe it doesn't look quite as impressive as it does on Smash Bros. But I think that's. Uh, that's perfectly acceptable, things considered. Oh, it's just something oddly charming about it. That's sort of uh, this sort of middle ground when pixel art was... I died. Let's move on. <laughs> Castlevania The Adventure. Now, just the fact that you could even get a, you know, sort of a proper Castlevania game running on the Game Boy, you know, such an underpowered system in comparison to... Even, even the NES was, you know, notably more powerful because, you know, home console and all that sort of thing. Ah! Can't even kill a thing. Many people consider it to be sort of like a forgotten sort of gem, a, a proper relic of the past that goes a little bit unsung. Ah, eyeballs everywhere. And uh, they didn't really get a lot of love until the Wii, uh, where they were, ah, where they, uh, the Game Boy games had a bit of a sort of a revival in a sort of a, a full remake of the games. And, uh, you know, sort of this this is where it all started. And the fact that you can play this on a Switch now so it can be portable or it can be, you know, handheld means it's, it's one of the best and easiest and most convenient ways, certainly, of playing the classic old Game Boy games. You know, you've got things like uh, Castlevania 4 was available, I believe, on the SNES Mini and stuff like that. But, you know, you can play it on the go now and that's... Uh, that's always a special thing. But we need to move on because there's another Game Boy game to look at. Oh, spicy biscuits. Yeah. Oh my God, there's a stage select. Castlevania 2 Belmont's Revenge. Now this basically, you know, much like I suppose, it's, I'd say it's probably closer in terms of its style to Castlevania 3 in the same way that, you know, sort of Castlevania 3 built upon all the tropes that became so integral to the Castlevania series. This did much the same thing, but um, for the for the original Game Boy game, uh, which is thankful, really, because you want it to be an evolution of what people expect. And I can already tell that this is a much more advanced, much more refined game. I still think the original definitely has that sort of that classic Game Boy charm, but in the same way as something like, uh, you know, sort of Super Mario Land and Super Mario Land 2, it just took everything and just developed it further and made it into a stronger, better game overall and I've got to kill this bat somehow. Holy water, I, I died. Ho oh, ho, that's a good time to move on to the next game. Yeah. Castlevania Bloodlines. Now immediately compared to all the other games, this has a sort of surprisingly different feel just simply due to the fact that it's on very different hardware. You know, this is, this is the Mega Drive and just the sound alone, you can tell that this is the Mega Drive, or the Genesis if you prefer. It has a very distinct character to all the sounds and stuff like that. And now I'm gonna sound like a massive nerd, but it really does have that wonderful, it has that real feel to it, which the SNES has as well. But I feel that the, I do feel, even though I run a Nintendo site, the Genesis just has that, you know, that character a little bit more. Am I invincible right now? I've never played this game. I know for a fact that I'm not playing as Simon Belmont because for one thing, it doesn't look much like him at all. And I'm sure that's one of the reasons why in the, uh, in, ah, in Europe, I nearly just said the UK, but it was the whole of Europe. This game is called the new, the new generation. I need to stop myself from saying the next generation. 
that's a different franchise. What I like is that this game definitely has a very different feel to it. In fact, all the all the different games have their own sort of character to them. Can I? Eh, there we go. Oh, it turns out it was just a book in that wall. Uh, I thought that would be where I need to go. I don't know where I need to go because I haven't been paying attention. A perfect excuse to move on to the next game. Take that, you fishy, swimmy thing. And so here we have the final game, which is very special as, you know, for reasons that I stated previously, it's never been released in the West. Kid Dracula. Is it gonna have an English title screen? I think it does. It does! Hey! It's not necessary to have an English title screen, of course, but it is, you know, it's easier to read for me. Let's be brutally honest. Now, this game was released um, essentially as a spin-off to Castlevania. Obviously, it's uh, got quite a different style going for it, and uh, you're not playing as... I, I don't know who you're playing as. I'm guessing you're playing as Kid Dracula, hence the name. Um, so, presumably a young Dracula or something along those lines. And uh, you, you clearly don't have a whip. You have something that you throw. I don't know what it is. But yeah, this game's actually got a real charm to it. It feels very much like, uh, oh dear, that wasn't supposed to happen. It's got a real sort of classic, uh, sort of Japanese, sort of ch children's style sort of charm to it. And the music especially is just, it's so, <laughs> it's almost slightly juxtaposed to have this in a Castlevania collection, but I really like it. I think it works really well have something with such a different sort of style to it and yet be tied you know to the Castlevania series and that that sort of sprite thing going on is actually that's pretty clever that's sort of the way the lines went it's pretty clever that's also similar to Castlevania you see it is it is definitely definitely Castlevania in there definitely some DNA I like this. So anyway, there you have it. That is Castlevania Anniversary Collection on the Nintendo Switch, and it runs beautifully. The uh, the, the emulation seems absolutely fantastic, and uh, you have a variety of uh, different display options, which I didn't go into, but uh, I'm sure you can have fun with that. It includes things like, you know, scan lines and stuff like that, uh, if you want to go that direction. I personally, I don't care for it. I like to just view it pixel, you know, maybe not pixel perfect, but 4.3, you know, that sort of that sort of good stuff, but that's my personal preference. You do what you like. If you want to learn more about this collection, then make sure you check out the link in the description. It's also available on other platforms as well if you prefer, but obviously I'm biased. Switch version. Play it at home. Play it on the go. Hey. Once again, massive thanks to Konami for sponsoring this video, and thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then why don't you... Ooh, whip that subscribe button in a perfectly candid and honest way, and be sure to check out NintendoLife.com for all sorts of lovely Nintendo-related content. Thank you again for watching. Bye-bye. Oh.